And you then spent days, weeks of really where you spoke to no one. About a year. About a year you spoke to no one, and you found that absence of language very powerful, didn't you? What, what is it when you remove language, when you, you rely on intuition, I guess? What do you learn about humans and about animals? Well, I think when you, you know, if we, if we, we live with words. We look at the world around us, we classify everything. And if you can see things without words, I mean, I always, when this came to me strongly as a very amazing fly, not just like a house fly, but it had golden bristles and red eyes and um, golden wings, and it landed on my finger, and I'm looking at this thing, and I thought, a fly. And then I thought, but look at it. And if you take away the word fly, you get this incredible creature, which is part of a whole tapestry and interwoven web of life, magic. And we just, it's a fly. And I realized how we destroy a lot of the magic in the world by always wanting to label everything. We can't help it. We just put things in boxes. And then we don't sometimes see the magic. Did you ever achieve that state that, uh, that monks sometimes and, and, and lamas and imams sometimes do uh, of losing a sense of self? Absolutely. And that, that's, for me, the value of being alone. Because if you're with another human being, it doesn't matter who that person is. It can be somebody you really love. But as long as there's somebody with you, you're a human being in, in the middle of the, of the wilderness. But if you're by yourself, it's very easy to forget you and just be. And it's, it's very hard to describe. But, um, you know, just on occasions, I truly think I felt something of what the mystics have described, of just feeling what was around me in a, in a different kind of way, of seeing half-hidden truths. And then you come back and you can't really remember.